Alright, so today we're talking about net ionic equations. And obviously we're talking about chemical equations here um, that involve ions, because it's an ionic type of chemical equation. And the word net means um, net versus gross, right? So you guys know about gross pay is the, if you work at a job, it's the total amount of money that comes in. The net amount of money that you take home would be everything after you've paid all your fees and dues and taxes and stuff. So the net ionic equation is basically the final chemical equation where all spectator ions, and you should have looked that definition up, have been removed. So spectator ions are ions that exist at the beginning and exist in the same form at the end, don't take part in the, uh, in the actual reaction, or actual forming of the compound. Okay, So it represents only the ions taking part in forming a compound that is insoluble. All right, so let's take, for example, uh, the combination of a very strong acid, hydrochloric acid, and a very strong base, sodium hydroxide. And if we take a look at this equation, let's write a net ionic equation. Now, um, there's going to be just a couple of rules. We're not going to get too far into the rules, okay, uh, with how we write uh, compounds in their ionic form. But what you need to remember is that strong acids and strong bases always fully dissociate, okay? So like HCl, all the binary ones, HCl, HF, HBr, HI, those ones always completely dissociate. So we can write HCl in, in, as ions, okay? So HCl aqueous, if you put HCl into a solution, it's going to split apart. That's what makes it a strong acid, is it splits apart really easily and readily. And so we have H plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous. Now, I know sometimes we do hydronium ion, H3O+, sometimes we do just H+. Okay, for all intents and purposes here, we're not including water in the, the equation, so we're just going to use the H+. Okay, you'll see it both ways, all right? And for some cases, we, we need to think about it as hydronium, H3O+. But in other ways, it's like, well, let's just forget the water that's in there, let's just focus on the other things, and that's what we're doing here. So what you want to do, strong acid, strong base, and anything that is insoluble, you also write in ionic form, uh, form, form. So strong acids, strong bases, and, and soluble compounds. Did I say soluble? Soluble compounds. Always written in ionic form, because that's the way they really exist in the solution. So HCl uh, becomes H plus plus Cl minus. NaOH becomes Na plus plus OH minus. And notice I've got the little AQ there, right? That's aqueous. It means it's kind of it's mixed in water. So we take the equation and we put it in ionic form and all, we show all of the ions there. All right? Now what we want to notice, and of course H2O is liquid, so we will write that in ionic form. That's a liquid phase, it's a molecule, we leave it as H2O. So what we see is that we have um, chlorine ions, oops, we have chlorine ions right here, and we have Na plus ions right here. In the beginning, they are in ionic form. After the reaction here, on the right side of the equation, they are still in ionic form. <coughs> so Na and Cl are spectator ions. So because they don't actually take part in forming the compound, whatever the compound is at the end, then they can be eliminated from the net ionic equation. So they basically cancel each other out, right? They're the same on both sides, just like math. If you have plus one on both sides, it's, it's gone, right? So what do we have left? Well, we have H plus, so we're going to put that in our net equation. And we have OH minus, put that in, and that produces H2O, put that in. So that's a very simple example of a net ionic equation, all right? So again, from the beginning, you want to take your equation, anything that is a strong acid or a strong base, you want to totally split apart into its ions. Anything that's insoluble also gets written in ionic form. And then uh, anything that's soluble can stay. And if it's, of course, in liquid form and that sort of thing, H2O is a molecule, so we don't want to split that up. And then uh, you basically just cancel out everything that's on the, s the same on both sides that in ionic form. Okay? And that's how you get to net ionic equation right here. Okay? So um, you want to write this down. I don't know if this is in your, uh, your notes already or not, but you want to write this down. Page 590, number 23 and 25 are your practice 
problems uh, in doing this. So remember the rules, and uh, 23 and 25 uh, will be your net ionic practice equations. Any questions? Okay, so now we turn our attention to polyprotic acids. So if we talk about poly, um, polynomials, poly, um, other poly things in, in life that you've heard of before, it means many, right? It means a collection of many. So poly means many. Protic would refer to the protons or the H plus ions. So polyprotic acids would be acids that have more than one H. So H2SO4 is an example of a polyprotic acid. So in cases where there are multiple hydrogens in an acid, the first hydrogen is usually released quite easily, but the second is not released very easily. So here we have a case where H2SO4 we know is a strong acid. And how do we know that? Well, if you look at your data tables, you'll see that, well, and, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but the Ka is very high. So that means it dis dissociates very, very easily and produces a lot of um, H plus or hydronium ions in solution. So it's a strong acid. But does it completely dissociate? Okay, here's the thing. With something like this, this first step where it emits one hydrogen, see it donates a hydrogen to the water, that happens very quick and very easy. That's why this is a strong acid. What happens is we still have this species here in solution. And technically, this has a hydrogen that is able to be donated as well. And really, this is a weak acid. This hydrogen is able to be released in solution, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't, it's not released very quickly or very easily. It's just a weak acid. So a strong acid releases lots of hydrogen ions into the solution, and a weak acid just releases a low level of them, okay? So think about battery acid or stomach acid, right? Very corrosive, very acidic. And think about lemon juice, right? Or apple juice or something like that, where it's a very low level of acidity, but it's still acidic. So strong versus weak. So the second hydrogen um, is uh, not released very quickly or easily. So what we can learn from this is that H2SO4 is a strong acid, and HSO4 is a weak acid. And we're going to talk a lot more about weak acids and their reaction uh, in, uh, in um, chemical equations uh, coming up. Uh, but that's, that's a little note on polyprotic. So uh, when you're doing net ionic equations, okay, what you might find is that um, uh, when this, something like this, when this dissociates, all right, it's going to dissociate into this right here. So just one H is going to come off. And so in your net ionic equations, you might find that you have uh, this species in, in part of the net ionic equations, or, or you know, this is going to turn only into this, and it doesn't go much further. Okay? So the strong acid is going to dissociate. So this H2SO4 becomes H plus plus HSO4 minus. Does that make sense? Not Both hydrogens are not going to be split up. So does that make sense? Like HCl, that's going to totally split up like this. Okay? But H2SO4, right, is going to be left like this. So not both hydrogens are going to come off, rip off real easily. The one's going to come off, but the other one, I mean, there's a lot of things going on here, right? Um, this is an overall negative now, so it's a little bit tougher for this this one little positive to get out of there because it's a negative and it wants to stick around. Um, you know, you know the, uh, the ion has shrunk a little bit maybe, right? And so everything is a little bit tighter and a little bit more compact and all this sorts of stuff. So that's the way I think that this needs to be uh, split up in your, if you run into that in your net ionic equation, okay? Any questions?